Welcome everyone to this breakout session. We are live in Detroit at KubeCon NA and welcome also to our virtual audience. Today we will be talking about Vitesse. My name is Deepti Sigredi. I'm the tech lead and a maintainer of Vitesse. I'm Rohit Naik. I'm also a maintainer of Vitesse. Matt was supposed to join us, but he wasn't able to travel at the last minute. We'll start with an overview of Vitus. Vitus is a CNCF graduated project. Uh, it became a CNCF project in January of 2018 at the incubating level. And in November of 2019, Vitus became the eighth project to graduate from CNCF. Vitus is a cloud native database. Uh, what does it mean to be cloud native? It means that for a very long time now, Vitus has been able to run in Kubernetes. Uh, Vitus is massively scalable. It was originally created at YouTube to, cre to solve YouTube's scaling problems with MySQL. And uh, Vitus is also highly available. And the way Vitus achieves scalability partly is through sharding, and that will be a focus of our talk today. I already mentioned Vita, uh, MySQL, but I just want to reiterate that Vitus is built around MySQL, and it's compatible with both 5.7 and 8.0. Vitus works with database frameworks, ORMs, any uh, MySQL clients that you already have, legacy code that's using uh, MySQL, pretty much anything that works with MySQL will work with Vitus. What Vitus does is that it gives a logical database view to clients. Behind the scenes, there may be many, many physical databases. There are people who are running thousands of MySQL instances behind Vitus, and Vitus can provide this logical view across all of those. It takes care of doing the query routing to the appropriate backend databases. Vitus supports both gRPC and MySQL clients, and it gives a single connection view to clients. This is the Vitus architecture. Uh, queries come in to Vitus and first hit the VTGate component, which is a proxy layer. And what VTGate will do is based on the query, it will figure out where to route the queries. And behind the scenes, especially if uh, you're running Vitus in a sharded environment, there are multiple shards, and each shard will consist of a primary and one or more replicas. People run anywhere from two to 10, in the most extreme case, 85 replicas. The primary and replicas, uh, the primary and replica instances of MySQL form a MySQL replication group, and each of those MySQL instances is managed by a Vitus component called VT Tablet. So uh, VT Tablet is the one which receives queries from VTGate and then sends them down to MySQL. And by doing this, one of the things we are able to do is that connections to Vitus are much lighter weight than uh, MySQL connections. So you can have hundreds of thousands of connections to VTGates, which in the backend translate to a much smaller number of MySQL connections through connection pooling. So we do connection pooling at the VT tablet level so that uh, the same MySQL connections can be shared across clients. So this is the query serving path. What happens when a query comes to Vitus? There is also the control plane, which includes a topology server, which can be etcd or console or zookeeper. And uh, there is a control daemon, Vitus control daemon, which accepts uh, administrative commands through a command line interface and sends them to the appropriate components. Uh, there's VT Orc, which we spoke about yesterday. We did a talk on VT Orc yesterday. VT Orc is the automatic uh, failure detection and recovery mechanism in Vitus. Uh, so if the primary MySQL for any given shard, a particular shard or key space is down, VT Orc is the one that detects and fails over to a replica with minimal downtime. 
Uh, VT Admin is our new web UI API component, and there is a web UI as well. So that's uh, an overview of the architecture of Vitus. Vitus is in production at many places. This is just a sample subset of all the companies that are running, in, running Vitus in production. Many of them run on Kubernetes. Some of them still run on VMs and basically non-Kubernetes environments. Uh, some of the key adopters of Vitus are Slack, which is 100% on Vitus, GitHub, which uh, has started their migration to Vitus, but are still in the process of completing that migration. So right now they have a mix of Vitus managed and non-Vitus managed uh, databases. JD.com, a Chinese uh, retailer, they are running 10,000 plus databases behind Vitus. And a planet scale has a database service that runs with us behind the scenes and now has tens of thousands of Vitus clusters running. Here are some uh, testimonials from current Vitus users, uh, HC and Nozzle. I'll give you a minute to read those. We have a vibrant community uh, for the calendar years 2020 to 2021. I gathered some statistics from DevStats, which is hosted by CNCF. We had 21 maintainers, over 400 contributors, of whom 214 were PR authors. So we are counting non-code contributions as well. Website, uh, docs, issues. Uh, comments on issues, reviews, all of those things. And our contributors came from 63 distinct companies and PR authors came from 30 distinct companies. Now I'll hand off to Rohit to talk about V replication. Hi. Vitus has always been uh, uh, shard aware. So all the components are uh, inbuilt understanding of a sharding architecture of Vitus. For example, query serving, uh, cluster management, backups, et cetera. We have had tools to support sharding uh, right from uh, the beginning. But around four years ago, our uh, Vitus co-creator and co-founder of uh, PlanetScale, Sugu Sugamaran, had a sort of an aha moment where he came up with this vReplication algorithm, which uh, works not just for sharding, but for several other uh, day zero and day two uh, uh, tasks that are required in at scale uh, systems. So, V replication is essentially a framework for creating and managing data pipelines. These are shard aware pipelines to perform particular actions. At an abstract level, um, what it does is if it, it matches a criteria that you define and then executes a defined workflow. When we look at some of these workflows, uh, you'll get a better understanding of this uh, def definition. Um, there are short-lived workflows which perform a particular task, and then they are done, such as uh, importing data into uh, Vitesse, sharding, uh, doing online schema changes. Uh, for when you're running DDLs on large databases, uh, you don't need to bring your database down. And there are long-lived workflows which are used for uh, continuous uh, materialization and for a change data capture. We'll take a slightly deeper look into some of these. When you migrate into Vitesse, let's say you want to just try it out, or uh, you've decided that it's, uh, you want to move it into, uh, move your MySQL cluster into production, uh, you would first, of course, create the Vitesse cluster. In this case, we have created a sharded cluster, but you could uh, start with unsharded as well. That's the uh, target. The source is the existing database, which is in your uh, data center. It could be RDS, uh, Aurora, MariaDB, or uh, Vanilla MySQL. Uh, you would start an unmanaged tablet. So in Vites, typical Vites clusters, Vites also, uh, the VT tablet also manages the database. Uh, in this case, of course, the database is external. So it's called an unmanaged tablet. And we start uh, the move tables workflow. In this case, all tables are moved from source to the target. 
the way the algorithm works is initially uh, we do a bulk copy, that's uh, bulk inserts into the target from the source. And once we are close, we start streaming the bin logs. It's a little more complicated than that, but uh, at a high level, uh, this is the algorithm. This results in a very highly rapid, uh, eventually consistent uh, system. And uh, we are able to get uh, like uh, shard hundreds of terabytes uh, in days or up to a week. Now, once the workflow is running, realize that you're still online. In all these workflows, you're still online, of course, sourcing, uh, serving your data from the source. So the target is not yet serving. So when your replication lag between the source and the target is low, let's say about under a second or so, you can uh, start switching traffic over into Vitesse. You have the choice of switching all traffic in the beginning or just reads into uh, Vitesse and still serving the writes from your source uh, and then uh, switching writes later on. Now, when writes are switched, we also, by default, start a reverse replication into the source from the target so that at any time, uh, you can roll back, if you like, uh, for whatever reason. The same move tables uh, workflow can also be used to move some tables uh, into a different database. Here, for example, uh, we are moving the product-related tables uh, into products and order-related uh, tables into orders. Uh, this works well if you have uh, services that have subsets of uh, tables that are fairly independent. Uh, you, of course, have common tables. There's another uh, flow to support that. Um, note that Vitesse will treat all of this as a logical uh, database. So even though internally there is a separate MySQL database that is uh, hosting some of the tables, using VTGate's uh, uh, MySQL adapter, you will still address the tables in the same way. So the application doesn't need to change. Now, say you just have a very large table, right? A transaction table or a message table. Uh, so, and that, your current hardware cannot manage that, either st due to storage restrictions or uh, read or uh, write QPS cannot be uh, increased even though you have thrown hardware at the problem. So, in that case, you can do horizontal sharding where the table gets distributed across the shards. Uh, in our example, we already had uh, a sharded uh, cluster, but here we are showing that we can increase the number of shards. Here we're just showing uh, two to four, but it could go uh, like two to 50 uh, something if you want. The reshard workflow will support this. Uh, in all cases of sharding, you can go up or go down. I mean, so the same workflow works uh, for doing both. For example, in the holiday season, you might just want to uh, shard higher so that you can serve the traffic better and at the end of it, just go back for cost uh, reasons. Now, these, uh, the previous workflows we discussed were short-lived workflows. Once uh, the particular action is done, the sharding action or the import action, the workflow is complete. These, uh, the next two we are talking about are long-running uh, workflows. Now, you probably have heard of uh, materialized views. Vitesse supports materialized views at scale with sharded uh, databases being ba uh, backed by sharded databases, uh, sharded tables. You can create a materialized workflow with your uh, query to, for example, denormalize tables or to uh, create aggregations for your uh, analytics, data warehouse, uh, reporting, etc. Uh, anonymization of data is a very important application that several users are using. Uh, when you want to move your data into uh, your warehouse or into staging or dev, you might want to redact certain information. And for sharded systems, uh, there are always common tables that are required across shards, like lookup tables, country codes, product catalog, um, language uh, tables, for example. So it's possible to have a single table which has the uh, master information, and all that can be 
uh, materialized into each shard so that all the queries are uh, local and not cross shard. Vitesse does support uh, cross shard queries. That's not a problem, but it's just a matter of performance. So VTGate knows where the data is located and it uh, will make the appropriate cross shard queries if required. But using uh, something like local uh, copies reduces that uh, requirement for scattering the queries. The last uh, application of VD application that I'll discuss is not uh, a workflow per se, but it's a uh, API that is available uh, at VTGate. It's a gRPC API, which will give you a event stream of changes. It can also give you snapshots or uh, changes or both, right? You can start uh, saying that you want to stream the entire database and then keep streaming the changes. This is extremely useful uh, and many users are using this for uh, moving the data into a data warehouse, for example, or for real-time notifications, uh, updating your Elasticsearch, uh, stuff like that. You can stream either the complete uh, database or a subset of tables, or you can filter certain tab uh, tables for any uh, special use. Now, there is a Debezium adapter, which is open source uh, and available. There are also users who have built, uh, they're not yet open sourced, but adapters for uh, Stitch and Airbyte. Just want to give an example of what's possible uh, with this. I'll now uh, move to a demo of a few of these workflows. First, I'm going to show how vertical sharding is done. Here we are starting with a single key space, which uh, has these three tables. So we are going to move the order related tables, customer and order, into a different uh, key space. And we are going to use move tables. Now I created uh, the cluster earlier because it takes a few seconds. So uh, at this point, I'll show you uh, using, so this, uh, MySQL CLI client is connected to VTGate. As you can see, um, it is currently running on 5.7 and uh, um, yeah, so essentially it will uh, act as a MySQL CLI. This is the initial uh, key space. So currently this is empty, right? So now I'm going to run this command. So it's a fairly simple command, um, which essentially just say which key space you want and which tables you want to transfer a uh, copy over to another key space. You give the workflow a name so that you can refer to it later on. Uh, in this case, uh, we have not only started the workflow, but we have checked that it's complete, um, that the lag is uh, low. And we also switched both reads and writes uh, at the same time. Now, if I go back to the client, I see that the order tables no longer exist here and they move to customer. So, so what I did here is essentially those tables have moved now to a different database. So if you had a service that was serving the customer's uh, service separately, Suddenly now you have uh, your data spread across these uh, different databases. Uh, the reshard demo, so from the current uh, key space, which we already moved the previous tables into, these are the number of rows that are present. So this will start uh, setting up the shards. Right? What we are going to do is we're going to set up two shards. Slash zero is basically uncharded, so there's a single database. We're going to create these two shards. Essentially, we're splitting the uh, key space, the uh, space of all IDs into two, the lower and the top. I'm showing it in gray because they're not yet serving traffic. The traffic is only being served by uh, slash zero. And then we're going to uh, run the reshard command. 
let's see if these are okay. They're still setting up. Um, this is a quick demo of the uh, VT admin API. That this is uh, GA in uh, the latest version, and uh, you can see that only one shard, the zero shard, is uh, serving right now. The others are coming up. As you can see, only one replica has come up. Which it will take a little bit of time. So by default, uh, we recommend uh, one primary and two replicas. Uh, and the VTOR component, which we had a talk yesterday about, will automatically select one of them as a primary. Yeah, this is why I started the previous clusters a bit uh, earlier. So, because this uh, VT tablet starts both itself and the MySQL instance as well, which is connected to it. Okay, so now let's look at VT admin and check. Yeah, so we have both the other shards created. Our primaries have been elected. And uh, we are going to now run the reshard command. Right? So again, it's a simple command. Um, of course, we just have very few rows here. This reshard can run for hours and days. Uh, it is resumable in case there are network errors, etc. It will automatically resume. And even if uh, there's a, a different primary gets selected because of failovers, all that is handled by uh, the workflows. Yeah, if you look at VT admin now, we see that the uncharted shard zero is no longer serving, and the other two are now serving. So VTGate will be uh, connecting to these shards. It knows um, where each row is located by uh, the sharding key. So when you define sharding, uh, a sharded uh, table, you define a sharding key, which could be just the identity of your auto increment or a hash of it, if you want better distribution across uh, the space, or a tenant ID, or a geo uh, ID for uh, if you want to localize your data for legal reasons. So uh, whenever queries are made, this we call it a Windex within Vitess. So the Windex is looked up by VTGate, and it uh, figures out whether it can go to a single shard or it has to do a cross-shard query. So what I'd shown you, just to recap, was that uh, We uh, did the reshard, but we had not yet done the cutover. Once the cutover is done, that's you do switch traffic, the switch traffic command. The shards on the right start serving. The last thing I'll show is uh, the materialization. I'm showing two things here. One is a reduction of data for PII uh, in case this uh, the credit card. And we want to do denormalization. I'm going to uh, move this into a facts table for your data warehouse. And I want, let's say, the month and the year, right? Just examples. So so what is most important here is the query that is being run. So you can look at the query. You can use MySQL functions um, and uh, do computations, et cetera. Uh, you can have a where clause. In this case, we have uh, removed all rows for a particular SKU and for a particular price. So just to give an uh, idea of what is possible, uh, we have, for example, one customer doing PII who's running about 600 workflows on different tables when they're moving it into the data warehouse. And they're all running on a single uh, VT tablet, just to give the idea of scale. And it's a fairly uh, commodity hardware. Uh, here you see that the credit card has been masked uh, and we have like, the total price computation month and the year. The last thing here I will show is the aggregation, uh, which is very useful for reporting purposes. You could, uh, so th the thing is this real, uh, it's happening in real time, right? As changes are happening, the views are updated in real time. The usual lags are extremely small. So uh, you can use it for reporting purposes or for read purposes. Uh, without having to have a separate, uh, like a data warehouse system or so. 
So this is a simple aggregate query that uh, is going to run here. Again, what's of uh, use here is the SQL query. It's a very simple group by um, and count star sum, etc. Uh, so this is what I wanted to demo. Uh, a quick demo to give you a flavor of how it works, uh, how easy it is to run. Um, we are now going to look at the new features uh, in Vitesse 15, and Deepthi is going to talk about that. We did the we did the 15.0 uh, GA release this week on Wednesday, and uh, there are a couple of things which are GA in this release. The first is BT Orc. Uh, which gives us the automatic failure detection and handling, and it does it in such a way that the desired durability policies are respected. The other thing that went GA in 15 is VT Admin. This is the web UI that uh, Rohit included in his demo, and uh, this uses a structured gRPC API to the Vitesse control daemon. And uh, this is a more intuitive, easier to use web UI than what we used to have. In addition to BT Orc and BT Admin, we also added support for a whole bunch of compression and decompression algorithms uh, during backup and restore. Previously, there was only gzip that was supported, and uh, anyone who wanted to use something different like ZSTD or LZ4 had to write some custom hooks. That's no longer required. Uh, there are a couple of features that went GA in 14, uh, which happened in June, but since that is af that happened after our previous update, uh, I just wanted to include that. So there is a new query planner and optimizer, which we are calling Gen 4. The previous one was called V3. Uh, this query planner is able to support more uh, MySQL features and uh, is able to plan more complex queries. Schema tracking is also GA. What schema tracking does is that uh, when new columns are added to existing sharded tables, previously that metadata had to be provided separately to VTGate. It's no longer necessary. VTGate can discover those new columns uh, by talking to VT tablets, which are connected to the MySQL. We have a native view support in progress, so it will be available in a future release. Next up, vReplication. Uh, one thing that is new in 15 is shard level migrations. It's possible to migrate a key space from one Vitesse cluster to another one shard at a time. Previously, the migration had to be done for all of the shards at the same time. We also have a better throttling for uh, vReplication workflows in order that the uh, databases that are serving production traffic are not negatively impacted by some of these uh, sharding and materialization type of workflows. Still on vReplication, there is a tool called vDiff which can be used to verify that vReplication actually did its job correctly. So for example, if you're doing a resharding, you want to make sure that the that the sum of the targets is equal to the source, or the sum of the sources is equal to the target, depending on how uh, the sharding is structured. So VDIF V2 is resumable. It will start restart itself uh, if the error is recoverable. And uh, it provides progress and ETA on uh, the process. Native online DDL was GA in 14, so Vitus has built-in support for uh, zero downtime schema changes, and that is also built on the replication. The other thing that is nice about the native online DDL support or online schema change support in Vitus is that these schema changes are revertible. We are also working on uh, incremental backups and point-in-time recovery in a future release. We already have a point-in-time recovery workflow, but what is coming up will support more use cases. Uh, next up is Q&A, but before we do that, 
uh, here are some resources uh, for anyone who wants to learn more. We have our website, which includes docs and tutorials. There's also a link to uh, the source code, which is just wittsio slash wittes on GitHub. We have a Slack workspace. There is a link to it from uh, our website as well. And uh, we'd love to get feedback on what you thought of this talk. So that QR code will uh, let you leave feedback for us. So now we are ready to take questions. So on top of MySQL, but you mentioned you have your own query planner and optimizer? Correct. So how does that work? We try to push down as much of the SQL computation to uh, MySQL as possible. But for complex queries, for example, you may have a complex join for which you have to fetch data from one shard and then combine it with data from another shard. Or you fetch one row from one shard and then you filter across all of the shards based on the value that you get back from that. So those types of complex queries require in-memory computation, and those are the things that VTGate is doing. So when a query comes in, VTGate will figure out, do I need to just send this to one shard, or do I need to scatter it, or do I need to send it to a subset of the shards, do I need to break it up into multiple round trips, depending on the complexity of the query? So that's the sort of planning and optimization that's happening at the VT gate level. So do you have a comparison for severity in MySQL versus? Yes. So uh, I would say that that test suite may not be comprehensive, but we do have a test suite where we compare the results between sending it directly to MySQL versus going through VTGate. Yeah. So we, in fact, added support for a lot of functions in, I think, 13. Uh, but there are still a few uh, MySQL functions that we have not completed support for. Uh, we have an LFX intern who's working on that right now. Yes, to uh, carry on on that. Uh, on that query processing on the, on the VTest layer, um, does it give you also some insight of the quality of your sharding decisions, mm. on, depending on some history of queries? Okay. Um, so we do produce a query log that um, tells you what plan was produced by VTGate, whether it was a select unique, meaning it went to one shard versus scatter. So we do produce that query log, so it's possible to process that outside of Vitus. Vitus doesn't do that as part of the suite of functionality we produce, but it's possible to do that. Anyone have any questions about uh, the different types of sharding keys we support? So, sorry, just expanding on the optimization. And, uh, so I guess it has, uh, its own explain plan would show the Vitesse's query plan? Yes, yes. Okay. And so uh, okay. we extend the explain syntax, and we have an explain format equals JSON and format equals VT explain. So there are a couple of them. Harshit can answer that. Yeah, so I'm from the query serving team from Vites. So yes, we do have, a, basically we have an explain plan for Vites where you can understand that if you use this, if you basically what we do is like you have to give, uh, like for this table, what is your sharding key and stuff. So you give that initially. Now you're running your queries. So you want to know what kind of plan is going to get executed by the VT gate. So you can do explain format equal to Vitesse 
and your query. So it will tell you what is the plan that is going to be generated by VTGate. And it will tell you whether it's going to be a select, uh, like if you're given a suppose a select query, so it will tell you whether it will go to a single shard, will it go to multi shard, whether it's a select in kind of query. So you'll you'll understand whether it's using uh, the right sharding key or not. If it's not, then you can add uh, more sharding keys to it. So basically, there's one thing called sharding key, and then you can have secondary win indexing on it. So we call Windex, and so you can add more and more Windex according to your query. So suppose. You have given your sharding key as suppose as ID, but in your where clause you are not using ID. You are using some other column, so you can create secondary index on that column so that then it doesn't go to all the shards because your data is distributed across multiple shards. So you don't want a query to become expensive. So you'll create a secondary uh, index on it so that now the VT can plan your query better, and so it goes only to the subset of the shards where your data is actually residing to. Uh, so yes, yeah, so lower level performance is as of now it's only at the MySQL level. So you can only what queries goes down, you can evaluate it. Uh, but at the VT gate level, what we give you is actually uh, a streamable API, which will tell you that for this query, how much time it took, like, and uh, where where it has gone to, which shard it has gone to, and what tables it has, and how much time it took at the MySQL level, at the VT gate level. So it, those informations are available at the VT gate level, not a full uh, performance uh, MySQL that you like what you see at the MySQL level, but you can query the MySQL level's performance. In Harshit, let me add to that. So uh, with Vitess, you will use both sources to tune the performance of your system. So you have the metrics and the statistics coming out of VT gate, but you will also then see how each of those individual queries is performing at the MySQL level. So you will need to do that. So it's possible that the queries VTGate is coming up with are inefficient, in which case the VTGate planning has to be improved. And it's possible that VTGate is coming up with the right queries, but you don't have the right indexes on the underlying tables, which is also fixable. So it's a com it becomes a combination. So you can override VTGate's query execution plan? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> But you so can override means like I told you, right? Like if you have missing uh, indexes yes. at the VT gate level, you can add it, and then you'll start having those. If if your if the planner itself is producing wrong bad plans, then you you have to just create an issue, and then someone from the query serving will get a better plan for that query. So, but so while you can't override the but query plan directly, like Harshit said, you can add secondary indexes, which can uh, produce a more efficient query plan. Like index hints? Not, yeah, at not the VT exactly gate level, it currently doesn't support in index hints, uh, but yes. Uh, but uh, the other thing that we support is if you know that this query has to go only in this particular shard, you can do shard targeting and stuff like that. So then it doesn't go through the planner phase of VTGate, gate, just directly pushes to MySQL. So what we do at VT gate level is we try to the plans that we generate at VTK level, we try to push as much as to the MySQL, so that we have to do less things on the in-memory stuff and let the MySQL handles more and more. So, like, uh, even if like we have to do aggregations, right? We try to, so we try to push those. Like, if you have to do just counts, we try to push all the counts till the MySQL, and we then we just combine the counts again at the VTK level. So we don't have to get full data. We just need counts from all the shards and then do it for you. So those kind of things, we try to push as much as push down approach on the MySQL. Yeah. So, uh, do the MySQL monitoring tools work on top of Vitesse also? Yes, yes, they do. So uh, Vitesse also comes with a sample Grafana dashboard that was contributed by uh, one of our contributors that you can uh, use to monitor the cluster. Well, you, you will, okay, I'll repeat that question. The question was, uh, does the graf, sample Grafana dashboard include uh, metrics at the query level? Yes, it does, because in VTGate, we do track the amount of time taken in VTGate, but also the amount of time taken uh, at the MySQL level. But we do not export all of the performance schema metrics, so those are probably not available in the sample Grafana dashboard.
Any other questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Come. For showing up.